a chill books original. Table talk of the Prophet Muhammad, a collection of quotes chosen and translated by Stanley Langpool. London, 1882. Author's Preface. The aim of this little volume is to present all that is most enduring and memorable in the public orations and private sayings of the Prophet Muhammad in such a form that the general reader may be tempted to learn a little of what a man was and of what made him great. Things are constantly being said, written, and preached about the Arab prophet and the religion he taught of which an elementary acquaintance with him would show the absurdity. What I wish to do is to enable anyone, at the cost of the least possible exertion, to put himself into a position to judge of Muhammad and his creed as surely and certainly as he can judge of ordinary education and scholarship. Let us only think of an enthusiast confronted with many and very difficulties, and trying to meet them as best he could by the inward light that guided him. Stanley Lane Poole, March 1882. Of being merciful, say not, if people do good to us, we will do good to them, and if people oppress us, we will oppress them, but resolve that if people do good to you, you will do good to them, and if they oppress you, oppress them not again. When God created the creation, he wrote a book, which is near him upon the sovereign throne, and what is written in it is this, Verily my compassion overcometh my wrath. God saith, Whoso doth one good act, for him are ten rewards, and I also give more to whomsoever I will. And whoso doth ill, its retaliation is equal to it, or else I forgive him. And he who seeketh to approach me one cubit, I will seek to approach him two fathoms. And he who walketh towards me, I will run towards him. And he who cometh before me with the earth full of sins, but joineth no partner to me, I will come before him with an equal front of forgiveness. There are seven people whom God will draw under his own shadow on that day when there will be no other shadow. One a just king, another who hath employed himself in devotion from his youth, the third who fixeth his heart on the mosque ill he return to it. The fourth, two men whose friendship is to please God, whether together or separate. The fifth, a man who remembereth God when he is alone and weepeth. The sixth, a man who is tempted by a rich and beautiful woman, and saith, Verily I fear God. The seventh, a man who hath given alms and concealed it, so that his left hand knoweth not what his right hand doeth. Verily ye are in an age in which if ye abandon one-tenth of what is ordered, ye will be ruined. After this a time will come when he who shall observe one-tenth of what is now ordered will be redeemed. Concerning Prayer Angels come amongst you both night and day. Then those of the night ascend to heaven, and God asketh them how they left his creatures. They say, We left them at prayer, and we found them at prayer. The rewards for the prayers which are performed by people assembled together are double of those which are said at home. No neglect of duty is imputable during sleep, for neglect can only take place when one is awake. Therefore, when any of you forget your prayers, say them when you recollect. 
When any one of you goeth to sleep, the devil teeth three knots upon his neck, and saith over every knot, The night is long sleep. Therefore, if a servant awake and remember God, it openeth one knot, and if he perform the ablution, it openeth another, and if he say prayers, it openeth the other, and he risseth in the morning in gladness and purity, otherwise he risseth in a lethargic state. When a Muslim performeth the ablution, it washeth from his face those faults which he may have cast his eyes upon. And when he washeth his hands, it removeth the faults they may have committed. And when he washeth his feet, it dispelleth the faults towards which they may have carried him, so that he will rise up in purity from the place of ablution, of charity. When God created the earth, it began to shake and tremble. Then God created mountains and put them upon the earth, and the land became firm and fixed. And the angels were astonished at the hardness of the hills, and said, O God, is there anything of thy creation harder than hills? And God said, Yes, water is harder than the hills, because it breaketh them. Then the angel said, O Lord, is there anything of thy creation harder than water? He said, Yes, wind overcometh water. It doth agitate it and put it in motion. They said, O our Lord, is there anything of thy creation harder than when? He said, Yes, the children of Adam giving alms, those who give with their right hand, and conceal from their left, overcome all. The liberal man is near the pleasure of God and is near paradise, which he shall enter into, and is near the hearts of men as a friend, and he is distant from hell. But the niggard is far from God's pleasure and from paradise, and far from the hearts of men and near the fire. And verily a liberal ignorant man is more beloved by God than a niggardly worshipper. I meant giving in alms one piece of silver in his lifetime is better for him than giving one hundred when about to die. Think not that any good act is contemptible, though it be but your brother's coming to you with an open countenance and good humor. There is alms for a man's every joint, every day in which the sun risseth. Doing justice between two people is alms, and assisting a man upon his beast and his baggage is alms, and pure words for which are rewards, and answering a questioner with mildness is alms and every step which is made toward prayer is alms, and removing that which is an inconvenience to man, such as stones and thorns, is alms. The people of the prophet's house killed a goat, and the prophet said, What remaineth of it? They said, Nothing but the shoulder, for they have sent the whole to the poor and neighbors, except a shoulder which remaineth. The prophet said, Nay, it is the whole goat that remaineth except its shoulder, that remaineth which they have given away, the rewards of which will be eternal, and what remaineth in the house is fleeting. Feed the hungry, visit the sick, and free the captive if he be unjustly bound. Of fasting, A keeper of fasts, who doth not abandon lying and slandering, God careth not about his leaving off eating and drinking. Keep fast and eat also, stay awake at night and sleep also, because verily there is a duty on you to your body, not to labor overmuch, 
so that ye may not get ill and destroy yourselves. And verily, there is a duty on you to your eyes. Ye must sometimes sleep and give them rest. And verily, there is a duty on you to your wife and to your visitors and guests that come to see you. Ye must talk to them. And nobody hath kept fast who fasted always. The fast of three days in every month is equal to constant fasting. Then keep three days fast in every month of reading the Quran. The state of a Muslim who readeth the Quran is like the orange fruit, whose smell and taste are pleasant. And that of a Muslim who doth not read the Quran is like a date which hath no smell, but a sweet taste. And the condition of any hypocrite who doth not read the Quran is like the colocynth which hath no smell, but a bitter taste. And the hypocrite who readeth the Quran is like the sweet Quran, whose smell is sweet, but taste bitter. Read the Quran constantly. I swear by him in the hands of whose mind is my life. Verily, the Quran runneth away faster than a camel, which is not tied by the leg. Of labor and profit. Verily, the best things which ye eat are those which ye earn yourselves, or which your children earn. Verily, it is better for one of you to take a rope and bring a bundle of wood upon his back and sell it, in which case God guardeth his honor, than to beg of people whether they give him or not. If they do not give him, his reputation suffereth, and he returneth disappointed. And if they give him, it is worse than that, for it layeth him under obligations. I men came to the prophet, begging of him something, and the prophet said, Have you nothing at home? He said, Yes, there is a large carpet, with one part of which I cover myself, and spread the other, and there is a wooden cup in which I drink water. Then the prophet said, Bring me the carpet and the cup. And the man brought them. And the prophet took them in his hand and said, Who will buy them? A man said, I will take them at one silver piece. He said, Who will give more? This he repeated twice or thrice. Another man said, I will take them for two pieces of silver. Then the prophet gave the carpet and cup to that man and took the two pieces of silver and gave them to the helper and said, Buy food with one of these pieces and give it to your family that they may make it their sustenance for a few days and buy a hatchet with the other piece and bring it to me. And the man brought it and the prophet put a handle to it with his own hands and then said, Go cut wood and sell it, and let me not see you for fifteen days. Then the man went cutting wood and selling it, and he came to the prophet, when verily he had got in pieces of silver, and he bought a garment with part of it, and food with part. Then the prophet said, This cutting and selling of wood, and making your livelihood by it, is better for you than coming on the day of resurrection with black marks on your face. Acts of begging are scratches and wounds by which a man woundeth his own face. Then he who wisheth to guard his face from scratches and wounds must not beg, unless that a man asketh from his prince, or in an affair in which there is no remedy. Merchants shall be raised up liars on the day of resurrection, except he who abstaineth from that which is unlawful, and doth not swear falsely, but speaketh true in the price of his goods. The taker of interest, and the giver of it, and the writer of its papers, and the witness to it, 
are equal in crime. The holder of a monopoly is a sinner and offender. The bringers of grain to the city to sell at a cheap rate gain immense advantage by it. And he who keepeth back grain in order to sell at a high rate is cursed. He who desireth that God should redeem him from the sorrows and difficulties of the day of resurrection must delay in calling on poor debtors or forgive the debt in part or whole. A martyr shall be pardoned every fault but debt. Whosoever has a thing with which to discharge a debt and refuseth to do it, it is right to dishonor and punish him. A beer was brought to the prophet to say prayers over it. He said, Hath he left any debts? They said, Yes. He said, Hath he left anything to discharge them? They said, No. The prophet said, Say ye prayers over him, I shall not. Give the laborer his wage before his perspiration be dry. Of War When the prophet sent an army out to fight, he would say, March in the name of God and by his aid, and on the religion of the messenger of God. Kill not the old man who cannot fight, nor young children nor women, and steal not the spoils of war, but put your spoils together, and quarrel not amongst yourselves, but be good to one another, for God loveth the doer of good. Of Judgments The first judgment that God will pass on man at the day of resurrection will be for murder. No judge must decide between two persons whilst he is angry. There is no judge who hath decided between men, whether just or unjust but will come to God's court on the day of resurrection held by the neck by an angel. And the angel will raise his head towards the heavens and wait for God's orders. And if God ordereth to throw him into hell, the angel will do it from a height of 40 years journey. Verily, there will come on a just judge at the day of resurrection such fear and horror that he will wish, would to God that I had not decided between two persons in a trial for a single date. Of Women The world and all things in it are valuable, but the most valuable thing in the world is a virtuous woman. A widow shall not be married until she be consulted nor shall a virgin be married until her consent be asked, whose consent is by her silence. Verily, the best of women are those who are content with little. That which is lawful but disliked by God is divorce. A woman may be married by four qualifications. One, on account of her money. Another, on account of the nobility of her pedigree, another on account of her beauty, a fourth on account of her faith. Therefore look out for religious women, but if ye do it from any other consideration, may your hands be rubbed in dirt. Of animals, fear God in respect of animals, Ride them when they are fit to be ridden, and get off when they are tired. A man came before the prophet with a carpet and said, O prophet, I passed through a wood and heard the voices of the young of birds, and I took and put them into my carpet. And their mother came fluttering round my head, and I uncovered the young, and the mother fell down upon them, then I wrapped them up in my carpet, and there are the young which I have. Then the prophet said, 
put them down. And when he did so, their mother joined them. And the prophet said, Do you wonder at the affection of the mother towards her young? I swear by him who hath sent me. Verily, God is more loving to his servants than the mother to these young birds. Return them to the place from which ye took them, and let their mother be with them. Verily, there are rewards for our doing good to animals, and giving them water to drink. An adulteress was forgiven who passed by a dog at a well. For the dog was holding out his tongue from thirst, which was near killing him, and the woman took off her boot, and tied it to the end of her garment, and drew water for the dog, and gave him to drink. And she was forgiven for that act. Of Hospitality When a man cometh into his house, and remembereth God, and repeateth his name at eating his meals, the devil saith to his followers, Here is no place for you to stay in tonight, nor is there any supper for you. And when a man cometh into his house without remembering God's name, the devil saith to his followers, You have got a place to spend the night in. Whosoever believeth in God and the day of resurrection must respect his guest. And the time of being kind to him is one day and one night, and the period of entertaining him is three days. And after that, if he doth it longer, he benefiteth him more. It is not right for a guest to stay in the house of the host so long as to inconvenience him. I heard this, that God is pure and love purity. And God is liberal and loved liberality. God in unifinite and loved munificence. Then keep the courts of your house clean and do not be like those who do not clean the courts of their houses. Of government. Government is a trust from God and verily government will be at the day of resurrection a cause of inquiry, unless he who hath taken it be worthy of it, and have acted justly and done good. Verily a king is God's shadow upon the earth, and every one oppressed turneth to him. Then when the king doeth justice, for him are rewards and gratitude from his subject. But if the king oppresseth, on him is his seen, and for the oppressed resignation. That is the best of men who disliketh power. Beware. Ye are all guardians, and ye will be asked about your subjects. Then the leader is the guardian of the subject, and he will be asked respecting the subject. And a man is a shepherd to his own family, and will be asked, how they behaved, and his conduct to them. And a wife is guardian to her husband's house and children, and will be interrogated about them. And a slave is a shepherd to his master's property, and will be asked about it, whether he took good care of it or not. Him whom God hath ordained to be the slave of his brother, his brother must give him of the food which he eateth himself, and of the clothes wherewith he clotheth himself, and not order him to do anything beyond his power. And if he doth order such a work, he must himself assist him in doing it. He who beateth his slave without fault, or slappeth him in the face, his atonement for this is freeing him. There is no prince who oppresseth the subject and dieth, but God forbiddeth paradise to him. There is no obedience due to sinful commands, nor to any other than what is lawful. O prophet of God, if we have princes over us, wanting our rights and withholding our rights from us, then what do you order us? 
He said, Ye must hear them and obey their orders. It is on them to be just and good, and on you to be obedient and submissive. He is not strong or powerful who throws people down, but he is strong who withholds himself from anger. When one of you getteth angry, he must sit down, and if his anger goeth away from sitting, so much the better. If not, let him lie down. Of vanities and sundry matters. O servants of God, use medicine, because God hath not created a pain without a remedy for it, to be the means of curing it, except age. For that is a pain without a remedy. He who is not loving to God's creatures and to his own children, God will not be loving to him. The truest words spoken by any poet are those of Labid, who said, Know that everything is vanity except God. Meekness and shame are two branches of faith, and vain talking and embellishing are two branches of hypocrisy. The calamity of knowledge is forgetfulness, and to lose knowledge is this, to speak of it to the unworthy. Whoso pursueth the road of knowledge, God will direct him to the road of paradise, and verily the angels spread their arms to receive him who seeketh after knowledge, and everything in heaven and earth will ask grace for him. And verily the superiority of a learned man over a mere worshipper is like that of the full moon over all the stars. Hearing is not like seeing. Verily God acquainted Moses of his tribes worshiping a calf, but he did not throw down the tables. But when Moses went to his tribe and saw with his eyes the calf they had made, he threw down the tables and broke them. Be not extravagant in praising me, as the Christians are in praising Jesus, Mary's son, by calling him God and the Son of God. I am only the Lord's servant. Then call me the servant of God and his messenger. It was asked, O messenger of God, what relation is most worthy of doing good to? He said, Your mother. This he repeated thrice. And after her, your father. And after him, your other relations by propinquity. God's pleasure is in a father's pleasure, and God's displeasure is a father's displeasure. Verily one of you is a mirror to his brother. Then if he see of ice in his brother, he must tell him to get rid of it. The best person near God is the best amongst his friends, and the best of neighbors near God is the best person in his own neighborhood. Deliberation in undertaking is pleasing to God, and haste is pleasing to the devil. The heart of the old is always young in two things, in love for the world and length of hope, of death. Wish not for death any one of you, either a doer of good works, for peradventure he may increase them by an increase of life, or an offender, for perhaps he may obtain the forgiveness of God by repentance. Ibir was passing, and the prophet stood up for it, and we stood with him and said, O prophet, verily this beer is of a non-believer woman, we must not respect it. Then the prophet said, Verily death is dreadful. Therefore, when you see a beer, stand up. Do not abuse or speak ill of the dead, because they have arrived at what they sent before them. 
they have received the rewards of their actions. If the reward is good, you must not mention them as sinful. And if it is bad, perhaps they may be forgiven. But if not, your mentioning their badness is of no use. Whoso consoleth one in misfortune, for him is a reward equal to that of the sufferer. Whoso comforteth the woman who has lost her child will be covered with a garment in paradise. The prophet passed by graves in Medina and turned his face towards them and said, Peace be to you, O people of the graves. God forgive us and you. Ye have passed on before us, and we are following you. Of the afterlife, verily among the signs of the resurrection will be the taking away of knowledge from amongst men and their being in great ignorance and much wickedness and much drinking of liquor and diminution of men and there being many women to such a degree that there will be 50 women into one man and he will work for a livelihood for the women to whomsoever God giveth wealth, and he doth not perform the charity due from it, his wealth will be made into the shape of a serpent on the day of resurrection, which shall not have any hair upon its head. And this is a sign of its poison and long life, and it hath two black spots upon its eyes, and it will be twisted round his neck like a chain on the day of resurrection. Then the serpent will seize the man's jaw bones and will say, I am thy wealth, the charity for which thou didst not give, and I am thy treasure, from which thou didst not separate any alms of destiny. The hearts of men are at the disposal of God like unto one heart, and he turneth them about in any way that he pleaseth. O director of hearts, turn our hearts to obey thee. The first thing which God created was a pen, and he said to it, Write. It said, What shall I write? And God said, Write down with quantity of every separate thing to be created. And it wrote all that was and all that will be to eternity. There is not one among you whose sitting place is not written by God, whether in the fire or in paradise. The companions said, O prophet, since God hath appointed our place, may we confide in this and abandon our religious and moral duty. He said, No, because the happy will do good works, and those who are of the miserable will do bad works. The prophet of God said that Adam and Moses in the world of spirits maintained a debate before God, and Adam got the better of Moses, who said, Thou art that Adam whom God created by the power of his hands, and breathed into the from his own spirit, and made the angels bow before thee, and gave thee an habitation in his own paradise, after that thou threwest man upon the earth, from the fault which thou committedst, Adam said, Thou art that Moses whom God elected for his prophecy, and to converse with. And he gave to thee twelve tables, in which are explained everything. And God made the his confidant, and the bearer of his secrets. Then how long was the Bible written before I was created? Moses said, Forty years. Then Adam said, Didst thou see in the Bible that Adam disobeyed God? He said, Yes. Adam said, Dost thou then reproach me on a matter which God wrote in the Bible forty years before creating me? Amen asked the prophet what was the mark whereby a man might know the reality of his faith. He said, 
if thou derive pleasure from the good which thou hast done, and be grieved for the evil which thou hast committed, thou art a true believer. The man said, What doth a fault really consist in? He said, When anything pricketh thy conscience, forsake it. I am no more than man. When I order you anything with respect to religion, receive it. And when I order you about the affairs of the world, then I am nothing more than man. Chill books. Audiobooks with relaxing music, visuals, and subtitles to help you stay engaged. <laughs>